And I'd like to invite to the stage Vera Florova, uh, deputy head of the Department of the Landscape Design uh, with the Bauman University of Technology, and she is also a member of our expert council. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, it's a real honor for me to address such uh, a, an esteemed audience. Actually, I thought that uh, we would be discussing uh, some practical issues, uh, uh, but my presentation is primarily about the uh, scientific uh, uh, studies that we do at the request of the Moscow government. Actually, it was great uh, to uh, uh, to see that uh, I uh, follow follow Artem's presentation because what I'm going to be talking about uh, will will not be perceived by you as uh, scientific studies because Artem just uh, showed the way it could be implemented uh, and he showed you some real life examples from the apothecary garden so it was great that Artem preceded my presentation. The point of our project was to evaluate uh, the ecosystem services that could be provided by the uh, green spaces uh, scattered all across Moscow. Uh, from the very outset, I just want to mention that Moscow is a green city, by the way, and uh, uh, green zones account for 50 percent of the uh, overall area. This is effect of life and uh, don't, do not make any mistake about that. Half of the city uh, is allocated for green zones. There are some guidelines uh, to this effect uh, and uh, these guidelines list different types of the green spaces and green zones. Uh, this actually, uh, th this slide shows the definition A uh, A green space uh, includes uh, all the uh, zones where plants grow. Basically, this is it. It's not just the Moscow government, but it's uh, also uh, other uh, uh, municipal authorities that start thinking about the right way to manage the green spaces, because we are talking about huge areas. Land is expensive in major cities, and uh, this is especially true for Moscow. And like I said, uh, green zones account for 50 percent of the Moscow area. Thus, uh, you have to uh, really deep dive and analyze uh, in depth uh, the profitability uh, of uh, such uh, zones. One of the uh, current challenges for smart cities boils down to managing the green spaces. It's a relevant issue not just for Moscow, but for other major cities. Well, as part of the smart city concept, we have to focus on things like uh, integrating uh, IoT uh, into the uh, smart city platform. We have to manage uh, the big data uh, that we get. For instance, uh, there are lots of CCTV cameras uh, around Moscow. You might have noticed that the number is growing with each and every passing year, so we have to, to process such data. By the way, according to statistics, uh, Moscow is lagging behind London because in, in London they have about 300 CCTV cameras per square kilometer, and in Moscow it's only 55 CCTV cameras per square kilometer. And the uh, smart city concept envisions rapid response to the most complicated daily tasks that uh, can happen in a big city. This slide shows you some background, uh, gives you some background information uh, and gives you the definition of the ecosystem services. In the past two decades, the global uh, scientific community uh, uh, has drawn a conclusion that uh, ecosystem services can be valued in uh, different currencies, for instance, U.S. dollars. So actually, uh, ecosystem services are measurable, and you can calculate the uh, profitability per uh, hectare. 
and uh, well it's uh, just uh, some background information i'm going to skip the slide because uh, we're really short of time we've been focusing on this issue uh, in the past 18 months uh, we have uh, read through lots of publications including foreign publications uh, coming from different continents The amount of data was so big that uh, we had to narrow it down. Actually, you know, there are 20 different categories of ecosystem services uh, in general. And we decided to hone in uh, uh, on five of them because we believe that these five ecosystem services are the most important ones for Moscow. I'm not saying that this is an exhaustive list. It's just a short list that we singled out uh, uh, for our research. So I'm going to give you more details on each and every bullet shown in this slide. The first ecosystem service that uh, we plan to evaluate in Moscow is managing the air quality. Uh, we're going to be evaluating three uh, factors, uh, three aspects, if you will. That's uh, the uh, plant uh, carbon sink capacity, the dust filtering capacity. Uh, well, carbon sink. Carbon sink is a is a buzzword, and mass media, uh, including online media, post many publications uh, on carbon sink. Green spaces uh, ha definitely have uh, all these uh, three factors that have to be taken into account. To be able to measure uh, the pollutant, uh, pollutants uh, sink capacity of a single tree or a park, well, actually, uh, we could not uh, use satellite images, uh, even if it was possible. Uh, we had to calculate uh, this ratio for each and every uh, tree. Uh, so we decided to uh, use the allometric equations to calculate the uh, fetal uh, mass for different uh, trees of different ages uh, growing in uh, different environments. To be able to evaluate the uh, absorption capacity, uh, last year we did lots of uh, wildlife tests uh, as well as tests uh, in downtown Moscow. Uh, we would get samples of the leaves from the deciduous trees and then we would run tests in the lab to uh, measure the relevant parameters. For instance, this uh, chart shows the uh, nitrogen sulfide concentrations uh, sorry, nitrogen oxide and uh, uh, sulfuric uh, substances concentrations in the leaves. We uh, did measurements in 30 different sites to uh, evaluate the dust absorption capacity. Of course, we could have uh, acquired this data from publications, but uh, the uh, statistics, uh, and by the way, we have uh, 30 years worth of statistics at our department. Uh, uh, the statistics are no longer relevant, uh, trust me. Uh, the data acquired 30 years ago is totally different uh, from the current data. Uh, and I guess uh, climate change uh, has had a huge impact on that, among other things. As for the carbon sink, uh, 
uh, we uh, got samples of plants from 30 different sites, and then we ran lab tests uh, to uh, calculate how much carbon was absorbed by the leaves. In addition to that, we also tested uh, some of the dead leaves. Uh, that were not raked in the parks. So we measured the uh, thickness of the uh, layer and the uh, carbon sink in the leaves. Fit inside properties uh, are really important. Well, despite the fact that in Moscow we don't have uh, that many fit insides uh, as compared with the southern parts, uh, we still had to uh, take them into account when measuring the ecosystem uh, services. The uh, second uh, service that we uh, uh, focused on uh, is microclimate regulation. It's common knowledge that uh, Green zones are much more comfortable for people than paved curbs. That's obvious, but uh, this parameter should be measurable. Uh, by how much uh, would we feel better if we are uh, in the shade of the trees as opposed to the open uh, concrete uh, curb? There is such a uh, parameter as uh, the uh, cooling capacity index. Uh, it's a measurable index. Actually, there are lots of indices. Not all of them are listed here, but the uh, horizontal area of the canopy is one of the indices. Uh, they put transparency, albedo, uh, or just a few examples. However, I'm not going to deep dive into that because it's not relevant. The uh, second uh, uh, index that we now measure is the Urban Heat Mitigation Index. Naturally, in this uh, case, we used satellite images. Our experts analyzed uh, the satellite images made available to us, and actually the, the outcomes uh, came as a surprise to us. We're talking about the surface uh, heat index and the uh, daily average heating. Large green uh, spaces such as the Sokolniki Park uh, in Moscow or uh, other national parks uh, within the city limits would feature a difference of 10 to 13 uh, degrees uh, as benchmarked with uh, the Moscow suburbs, while the difference uh, in downtown Moscow uh, sometimes reached 22 to 24 degrees. And actually, uh, these temperature deviations uh, can clearly be visible in the satellite images. In addition to that, uh, we used the laser scanning technique uh, to scan green spaces. It's worth mentioning that uh, digital technologies play an important role. Well, by the way, they are part of the smart city concept. And as far as green spaces are concerned, they are uh, poorly digitalized. Well, actually, we were the first ones in Moscow uh, who actually uh, used laser scanning. Uh, Leka uh, helped us uh, with providing the tools. We scanned eight different sites. And now we have uh, 3D models of each and every site and each and every tree. I guess we could use them for different purposes, starting from measuring certain parameters and up to uh, designing uh, landscapes based on the model. This is just an example of uh, how a 3D uh, scan of a tree uh, could be used for uh, various purposes. The next ecosystem service that I'd like to touch upon, uh, which is relevant for Moscow, is uh, uh, surface drainage. Uh, 
if you live in Moscow, you are well aware of the fact that uh, many uh, Moscow districts, uh, because of heavy rains, uh, are flooded. Each and every year we have to uh, uh, combat uh, flooding because the uh, drainage system uh, was not initially designed for such heavy rains. So basically uh, we believe that uh, this ecosystem ser service is of paramount importance. I do understand that it's a fine print and you can hardly see anything in this table, but If uh, there is brush and grass uh, on uh, in the green uh, surface, the surface drainage uh, uh, ratio is about uh, six percent, uh, while uh, while the uh, blacktop paved uh, area has uh, a ratio of one hundred percent, which uh, proves that. Uh, Vegetation and even uh, poorly cultivated uh, lawns uh, have uh, a uh, drainage ratio of 50 percent. However, if uh, the area is uh, planted with uh, brush and uh, perennials, uh, then uh, the uh, ratio gets much better. And this is one of the approaches that could be used for uh, developing uh, various parts of Moscow. The efficiency of the green zones uh, might be higher if we could uh, calculate the surface drainage ratios. Green spaces uh, would be able to drain rainwater from other uh, areas. And Artem, in his presentation, uh, just said that uh, rainwater in, uh, in Moscow is of uh, good quality. Thus, you can put it into water tanks uh, for follow up watering of your plants. Because basically, uh, most of the plants and most of the vegetation. need uh, irrigation, additional irrigation. Uh, at least uh, this is always the case in Moscow, save for uh, summers when we uh, got uh, much rain. And uh, the green infrastructure technologies is something that Artem already mentioned in his presentation. Uh, such technologies could be applied in uh, the city streets. Rain gardens will contain water, thus uh, it will reduce the load on the drainage system and create better conditions for the urban plants. Previous speakers already touched upon uh, the uh, biodiversity topic. And uh, one of the indicators of the biodiversity uh, would be uh, urban pollinator biodiversity evaluation, but I do understand that uh, there is no direct link, at least uh, as we deem it. It's not uh, that uh, the more pollinators you have, the greater biodiversity. Uh, uh, that would be a um, uh, an illusion to say so, but uh, I guess we would uh, we, we would have to uh, come up with better ideas uh, to increase the biodiversity. Another important function for any uh, green space is uh, the uh, uh, recreation function. Therefore, when you design a green zone in the city, you have to keep in mind that uh, these areas will be visited by people. We evaluated uh, all of the 30 sites that we singled out, and we realized that uh, certain sites 
are overloaded to a large extent. Uh, 100 people per hectare is the current standard. If you have 100 people per hectare, then uh, no damage is uh, done uh, to the green zones uh, if people just walk around and rest and recreate. So there is no excessive load if this ratio is maintained. However, at a number of uh, experimental sites that we evaluated uh, by involving students, it turned out that uh, this load uh, per hectare uh, was uh, uh, over exceeded. Uh, that holds true for the Sokolniki Park, the Hermitage Garden. Uh, too many people come at uh, a given point of time to uh, these parks, and naturally uh, that has a negative impact on the plants. Another aspect that we assess as part of the recreation evaluation. The recreative uh, recreation function evaluation is the aesthetic value. Well, you might ask me, how do we evaluate the aesthetic value? James mentioned that there are multiple ways to do that. For some people, uh, aesthetics are about uh, the beauty of the gravel paved pathway and the shrubs growing uh, along uh, this uh, pathway. For others, uh, aesthetics are about blossoming roses uh, and hortensias. I don't think we're going to uh, find uh, any uh, one-size-fits-all tool to uh, evaluate aesthetics anytime soon. But nevertheless, uh, I guess uh, some uh, public opinion polls would be welcome uh, uh, to get a feeling of uh, what people mean by aesthetics in a specific region. We might want to educate uh, people to change the perception of aesthetics. Nevertheless, green spaces should provoke positive emotions, and I don't think you're going to argue against that. We all should get positive feelings, and we should uh, all uh, get energized uh, by the green spaces that we visit. It is important. Some of the uh, green spaces uh, in Moscow are perceived by Moscovites uh, as uh, scary places, you know, because we uh, did some uh, public opinion polling and uh, it turn, turns out that uh, huge parks, such as the Ismailovo uh, Park, uh, scare people. Because, you know, if you're all alone in the middle of the park, uh, you get scared if you don't see anyone around you. Uh, well, uh, I'm not saying that uh, this park is not safe. You might not, you might not even get assaulted by anyone, but uh, the feeling of safety uh, it should well, is directly linked to aesthetics. If you like something, if you like to be somewhere, you feel safe. And uh, uh, these emotions are interlinked. And I mean, I mean, uh, the sense of beauty, aesthetics, and the uh, uh, physical safety. In addition to that, we plan to evaluate the number of uh, blossoming um, plants it would be one of the parameters uh, to evaluate the aesthetic value. Uh, in Moscow, we don't uh, get that many blossoming trees and shrubs. And uh, there are huge uh, spaces in Moscow parks uh, where uh, you won't find a single blossoming tree or shrub. I'm almost done, don't worry. And based on all of these calculations, this is just for your information, uh, all these indices uh, are being calculated. We have special equations and algorithms to this effect. Ultimately, we will have a comprehensive evaluation of the ecosystem services provided by the uh, green spaces in general, uh, and based on that, uh, we'll come up uh, with a smart model to manage the uh, green spaces uh, and to measure the effectiveness. And going back to the previous uh, presentation, 
Uh, I just want to mention that uh, here in this botanic garden, uh, you have uh, the highest concentration of the ecosystem services. It's great that we have a garden like that in, down, in downtown Moscow, and it's great that it is not managed by the Moscow government. Uh, nevertheless, it is within Moscow. We can come here and we can uh, get all these ecosystem services uh, in real time. In conclusion, I just wanted to say one other thing. Our assessment of the ecosystem services uh, show that uh, uh, wildlife spaces get uh, well, uh, wildlife spaces beat uh, artificially uh, done uh, green spaces all the time, hands down. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, I want to say uh, take care about the nature because uh, nature is the best designer ever. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, that's a, an unexpected conclusion. Uh, let's take a brief Q&A session. We only have time for a couple of questions. I have a very practical question. Uh, where can I get uh, uh, more detailed information on the studies that you have done so far? Well, uh, we haven't done a single publication yet. That's a pity. Well, according to our contract, we cannot publish the outcomes of our studies. Uh, that's why I've been only providing you with some general data without showing, showing any specific figures. But I hope that in the near future, we will be able to publish the outcomes of our studies. Uh, uh, what magazine, uh, what journal, scientific journal, are you going to publish your uh, results? Uh, I, I cannot divulge this information. Who did you sign uh, the contract with? It's uh, the uh, uh, nature uh, use department of the Moscow government. Do you have also a metro station on the city for the data that you have, or you use uh, normal data? Well, uh, we used satellite images uh, and we uh, decoded the satellite images uh, to measure this. Uh, uh, of course, we do have uh, meteo stations uh, within city within city limits, but we, we are talking about the surface heating effect. It's not the ambient temperature, uh, but rather the surface heating effect. It's much better to use infrared images. Uh, uh, um, <coughs> with the data above the canopy of the construction, temperature data or irradiance data, no? Well, we haven't analyzed this data yet. We might include it later on. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. I was just wondering, when you measured uh, 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 the uh, nitrogen oxide and SO2 uh, absorption capacity, uh, were these the only two substances that you me measured? NOx and SO2 are the most uh, widespread pollutants, so we only measured those. Maybe I missed it in your presentation, but uh, uh, what equation did you use uh, to uh, calculate the dust filtering capacity? Do you, ne do you need special devices to this effect? Well, actually, we used lab tools. Uh, like I said, we uh, used uh, dead leaves uh, for uh, running such lab tests. Actually, we uh, followed uh, widespread techniques and methods. The question is about the results of the lab leaf tests. Are you talking about the pollutant concentrations? Well, uh, uh, how dirty and how contaminated are leaves uh, in Moscow, dead leaves in Moscow. Actually, uh, th th there are rules as to uh, whether to wreck or not to wreck the leaves. And uh, 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 Executive Order 743 gives you specific guidelines on uh, uh, what to do with the dead leaves. It's not about the level of contamination. Uh, it's, not, it's not even uh, that relevant. Uh, we... Uh, evaluated the carbon sink capacity uh, of the dead leaves. Uh, actually, we tried to uh, uh, measure the benefits rather than negative consequences. So what do you personally think? think? Should we rack, uh, rake leaves in uh, uh, residential areas? I have no clue. You have to analyze each and every backyard, I guess. 
but uh, leaves actually improve the quality of the soil. Uh, but uh, whether the locals would like that, that's a big question mark. Uh, you have to, uh, uh, well, uh, one size does not fit all. One last question, please. Uh, the uh, methods that she used, uh, were they uh, your own uh, techniques or did you use some foreign experience? And can you actually benchmark your results uh, with, the, uh, uh, with, with the data on uh, foreign parks? What would be the profitability of uh, uh, green spaces per square meter in Moscow as compared to those in London or elsewhere? As for the equations and methods, uh, our department uh, has recently turned uh, 70 years. Uh, well, and w when we started this project, it turned out that many studies uh, were done in the past. Back then, they used different definitions and terms, and the uh, but actually, the school of thought, the scientific school of thought, uh, is uh, is there. As for the re uh, recreation uh, functionality, uh, we use the following ratio. The number of people per hectare, the number of visitors per hectare. We just uh, took measurements in different uh, times of day, in uh, different weekdays. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, did breakdown by sex, by age, uh, stuff like that. So basically, we did uh, measurements on the ground. If we're talking about closed spaces, uh, well, actually, you can use tickets uh, to calculate the food traffic uh, in, the, in this particular garden. Well, uh, w uh, what about uh, retired people and uh, people with, uh, and families with lots of kids? Thank you so much, Vera. We are way behind the schedule, so we have to move on.